This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance is the 21st century's educational corporation specializing in the most comprehensive enterprise training solutions, ranging from e learning to instructor led training. Press play for success. After watching this video, be sure to become a Facebook fan to receive the latest updates, promotions, and course releases. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to preview the latest desktop, soft skills, and IT training videos. Now, contrary to the opinion of some, the computer is not going to do anything without me telling it what to do. And so if the computer performs some action, that means that something told it what to do. Now, it may not have been you, but it may have been a program that you installed. In other words, computers don't just do things on their own. Uh, and input and output devices are the primary ways in which you and I as humans can interact with the computer system. And these are also the devices then that I'm probably the most familiar with. Why? Because these are the components that we see and touch and use every single day. Input devices very simply send input to the computer. Send information to the computer so that it can process that information. Keyboards and mice are your primary input devices. Keyboards allow us to type characters and numbers and then those are going to be sent to the processor and from there to the program that we happen to be using like our Word document or Excel spreadsheet or Internet Explorer or web browser. Mice allow us to point and click on items in order to run a program or open a document, a photo, a video. We can double click. Uh, to open it up. We can right click an item and we'll get a menu of options like delete or rename or cut and copy, you know, those kinds of things. But the mouse is my way of performing these commands. Now, if we didn't have a mouse, we'd have to type in commands. I'd have to type cut, copy, you know, open, and here's the name of the file. So, thankfully, we do have the ability of pointing and clicking clicking and dragging, and that makes using computers a whole lot easier. But those are the primary input devices. That doesn't mean they're the only kind, but it means they're the most common. Output devices, on the other hand, are the way that we can see what's going on on the computer system, and there's two primary output devices. Monitors display the running programs, they display the characters that we're entering in using a keyboard or the document that we open or move by clicking using the mouse. So they tell me what's going on inside the computer. Printers are for the sole purpose of having hard copies of documents, photos, web pages, so that I can use them later, so I can refer to them. And basically all a printer is, is taking what was on the screen, you know, in a certain program or just on the entire screen and sending it so that it can be put on a piece of paper. So instead of just looking at the monitor, I want to put it on a piece of paper, so I send it to the printer. Again, let's consider an example using these input-output devices. Hey, I use the mouse and I use the mouse to click on a desktop icon. Now when I do that, double click, it sends a command to the processor. And the processor, using the location that this shortcut, this icon is pointing to, goes and tells the hard drive to locate the program. Hey, it locates the program, the program gets loaded into memory, and the processor then sends output to the video card and that displays the keys or displays the, uh, the program on the screen. Okay. From at that point, I type in characters. I'm using the keyboard and I'm giving it more input. The characters that I'm typing are actually sent to the processor and the processor sending output out to that video card which connects your monitor so that those characters display. and You can see what you're doing. And then at the end, you choose to print. You've finished your document, you choose to print, and now the processor sends the output to a printer, and the printer begins to print the information that you're seeing in the program out onto a, a piece of paper. Okay, and so again, that's just a further example of how we use these input and output devices to communicate with the system. Now, like I said, there are other input output devices, as those are not the only ones, they're just the most common. But it's arguable that this next one is also extremely common. Uh, speakers, they're probably just as common as a monitor, and we need those to play sounds from the computer system. Now, these might be separate speakers, they might be included with the desktop itself, uh, it might be a part of the monitor, but still, we have speakers that are plugged into a sound card that play sounds for me. 
microphones give me the ability to record sounds. Now, I don't necessarily always need a microphone. The capability is on every system. Uh, I can use microphones, though, for uh, voice chats and things like that over the internet, phone calls over the internet, uh, or just to record myself. Network cards and modems provide the ability to send and receive information over the network. And joysticks, that would be another uh, input device that is an alternative to the mouse and the keyboard, but specific, of course, for playing computer games. And webcams would be another input device. This would be the ability to record video and possibly uh, even audio if it's got a microphone built into it. Okay, And, and this, again, is probably still scratching the surface. There's a lot of input-output devices, but the point is we need these devices to do two things. To tell the computer what we want it to do, because it's not going to do it on its own, and then to show me what the computer is doing. Now, collectively, all of these devices are peripheral components. In the next section, we'll take a look at some additional peripheral components.